<laughs> okay. Okay, welcome to Greenhouse Live. It's always nice doing Greenhouse Live after a win like that. 28 nil here at, um, I think, well, I think it's called Bank West Stadium is the uh, commercial name, but the new Parramatta Stadium, which is a brilliant stadium, I have to say, um, here. Um, but 28 nil over uh, the Tigers. There's lots of happy Raiders fans Tigers, around here yeah! at the moment. Oh, lucky, <laughs> lucky, yeah, well, oh, it's 28 nil. I'm not so sure about that, but no, look, um, Fantastic, and fantastic to be back doing Greenhouse Live. Last week, there was no Greenhouse Live, unfortunately, because Steve um, Steve pulled a heartstring during the week and didn't come up to the game and didn't bring the gear, um, which was a little bit disappointing. So, um, that, but it actually worked out all right because I got to go um, and experience it down the rooms, which was which was fantastic last week too. But apologies for the fact we had no... Um, Coming, coming with Polly, we got a, a cast of thousands here um, today. Uh, apologies for no greenhouse live last week. We hope not to uh, do that too often. But we've got a few, a couple of debutants on uh, greenhouse live tonight. We've got Karen's back. You're not a debutante. You've been on a few times. And yeah, no, sorry, I'm late. I was. Uh, the boys were coming around to the fence and giving everybody hugs and photos as usual. Fair Doing enough. But you must have done a lap of the ground to have come from that way. Um, <laughs> but um, and but Gareth, um, man about town, and uh, well. In particular, at the uh, Raiders Gear Shop in um, Fishwick. I'll I can't, try and get around. Can't remember what it's called. Gareth, welcome Jersey to Greenhouse Live. Thank you. First I'm, time on, so it's good fun. And I'm sure um, Kylie and Kate are watching this, so we'll More say hello to them. More than likely. <laughs> um, and also, we've got a, another special guest, Colin. We just met before a, um, a queen being raised, but uh, Sydney based Sydney, Raiders, Sydney -based fan, Raiders now. fan now. Yeah, definitely. And uh, don't get out to too many games, and always uh, yeah, to come out with a, a shutout, another shutout for the year, um, is fantastic. Yeah, but. but Greenhouse live viewer I hear. Oh yeah, definitely. When right. Steve hasn't pulled a hard string. <laughs> when Steve hasn't uh, is is around, definitely. And and um, yeah, no, I, I appreciate the effort that you guys put in every week. Ah, terrific. Thanks, Colin. Well, look, it really was a, a very very good performance. Twenty eight nil against a team that I didn't think played particularly well. I'm not too sure that's. I would probably go as far to say that's probably the worst opposition we've played this year. But I'm a bit hesitant to say that because I think I said that about them when we beat them by 50 last year and then only about six weeks later they came and beat us at home. Well, I think we played them again in not that far away. So we won't crow too much about um, about uh, the Tigers' performance, but we'll focus on our performance, which really was terrific. It is it is the thir third time this year we've kept a team to nil. I believe it's the first time in our history we've done that. Um, and it's actually the first time we've kept a team to nil in Sydney since 2001. So um, it's it's just magnificent um, to have done that. Very, very good performance. Thoughts? My thoughts were that, I mean, yeah, the Tigers weren't playing great, but the Raiders never, the boys never got cocky about it. Mm. They always treated the Tigers like they were a serious opponent and still put in everything into the defence. That that Simmonson hold up in goal. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it was. That was. I mean, that just shows the effort that we, we put in. And even that tackle we had, I oh, can't quite remember because I was down on the fence by that stage, but in the last minute yeah. where we put them into touch in that in that last, um, the virtually the last last uh, the play of the, the game. <laughs> there you go. Even, even what? <laughs> even uh, even <laughs> Watford fans here, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, just that just showed. I think you know you, the twenty-eight points is fantastic, but you know it's efforts like that that keeping the team to nil that it, that are going to take us a long, long way in this competition. Absolutely, and you know I think I think just everything was so. It was almost like we were determined to prove tonight that we were capable of a polished performance, and that was such a good performance. It was. I thought we really played the conditions well right from the start. Um, you know they obviously dropped the ball in the first set. That that happened. Um, Two brilliant tries. We'll talk about those those in a sec. But I just thought, uh, in, well, three brilliant tries in the first half. But but those first two um, were great. But but I just felt that early on we were very very good. We were right on top of them. It felt a bit like last week where we were right on top of the opposition, um, but couldn't quite get um, you know take control of the game. They still looked like they were they were in there. And to get those two tries right before half time um, really put us in a position where we're in a very very strong position. We're highly unlikely to get beat from there. And, and I thought that was the scoreboard pressure that we needed after after a really good performance. Yeah, I thought the defence was outstanding tonight. Some of the try, uh, some of the try saving tackles they pulled off, uh, but some of the the handling as well. Uh, wet conditions, some of those tries as you talked about. I mean, they, you know, we're guilty of coughing up a lot of balls sometimes, but tonight the handling was 
was near perfect. Uh, and I thought the Origin boys backed up really well as well from the other night. Um, oh, yeah, we'll talk about that. That was that was um, really, really good, I thought. Very, very pleasing. But but you're right, the handling handling was very, very good. I think it was 83% completion rate. There was a couple of mistakes. Charles made that one after a good catch when he, he fumbled on the play of the ball. There was a couple of those. But with the exception, when you consider how many they dropped, and it was really greasy conditions here, you know, compared to what was a gorgeous day in Canberra today, it was very surprising to come up here and, and find wet conditions. Um, but, um, yeah, I just thought that we played the conditions. We were there to play. I know Channel 9 made a lot of the fact that um, we warmed up on the ground. They didn't. Um, I don't know if that really makes a lot of difference, to be honest. But um, Gould seemed to be excited about that. And once Gould says one thing, he'll say it 15 <laughs> times in the call. Um, I heard in the sports is. But um, that um, we were really... We came again, as we've seen virtually every week this year, with the right attitude, didn't we? Definitely. Uh, we, we came in, um, you know, I think we, we played, I think, cohesively this week as a team. I think last week um, there was a lot of individual efforts that went on um, that got us over the line, but I think we were, um, there was a lot more cohesion as a, as a group this week. A couple of Tigers fans a little bit like their team there, just with no no sense of direction, I thought. But um, uh, he probably a bit like Luke Brooks played today, I would say, but um, that's probably a bit harsh. Um, but, um, yeah, no, look, and I just thought that that start with the forwards was, was really, really good. That, oh, it's a Gungarland Bulls jersey, I think. Um, Bradford. All here. Well, Bradford Bulls, Bradford. isn't it? Oh, there you go. Well, that's, that's where we do our recruiting recruitment from. Um, yeah, we'll take a couple of more boys from Bradford, let me tell you. Um, yeah, but I just thought our start, and we talk, talk about um, English forwards, actually, he's not one... It's actually not from Bradford, but Ryan Sutton I actually thought was fantastic early on. That you know, starting we, we obviously made the change with uh, Soliola and Sutton to start, and when Tarpany instead of um, Papali and um, Louis to the bench, and I thought that was a good move. Obviously, Papali coming back to play another game after playing the game he played on went you know, went two days ago yeah. on Wednesday night um, in Origin to come back and to and to play the way he did. He didn't play anywhere near as many minutes as he normally does, but geez, he was good when he was on. But I just thought Ryan Sutton early on just set the standard. Him and John Bateman were just fantastic in that first little bit. Um, that um, little um, kick from Whitehead. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's been a week for good soccer skills from people from the north of England, um, which was very, very disappointing last um, Sunday morning, but uh, rather than the south of England. But uh, and I know Robbie Farrow went all the way to Madrid to watch that. Um, good luck to him. Oh, was that yeah. what was wrong with him today? <laughs> yeah, we'd been to Madrid and back. Well, yeah, well, I stayed up all night to watch the game too, and he was probably happier at the end of it than me. But um, <laughs> that's the way it goes. But. Um, yeah, um, just that, that little t- kick through from um, Whitehead then, as well as the, the flick from Croker was just brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then after that, so we got, we got 6 nil in front, and then after that I thought we controlled the game pretty well, but we couldn't quite put the pressure on the scoreboard. I think, you know, I think we'll t- I'm sure there'll be some comments. I'm actually going to need to get Facebook up. We've got that many people to talk to here. We haven't got, we haven't got um, the comments to get through yet. We might be here for a while. Um, I just thought that we controlled the game. Probably that was a little bit of an opportunity for Caesar really to take his stamp. He did some good things, but perhaps didn't quite stamp stamp his um, his marker on the game like I would have. And we perhaps could have got a couple more tries in that period. But then to get those two tries right before half time, that that um, kick through from Kotrick was just amazing oh, skills. Yeah. And then and then the the one right on half time where Bateman kicked it through. Yeah. Um, Three brilliant tries yeah. in the, that Bateman try. I was expecting, you know, we'll just close off the set. Yeah, you know, end the half, twelve nil up. You know, that'd be brilliant to go, um, not letting them score, and yeah. then just just the brilliance of him and that that Bateman factor that people are talking about, which we didn't have before and we have now, and it just that makes that little bit of difference and um, and and an extra six points as well. And it did, and it did look like we were probably going to set up for a field goal at that point. I thought was was probably what the play was expected to be. So it's welcome. just good to be here. Welcome to Greenhouse Live. What's your name? Blake. Blake. Yeah. How you going? Sorry. I'll That's you all right. You got you <laughs> see, you got a cast of thousands here. We got, I, I, there was twelve thousand people here supposedly. I reckon they might have been counting legs rather than heads. But um, but there was a lot of Raiders fans, wasn't there? Were. Yeah. We travel. We're up in uh, Brizzy for Magic Round, and I oh. saw more green jerseys than. 
I saw my own, so there you go. Yeah, no, that was, Magic Round was good. Steve was miserable then too. Like he's, <laughs> he's got a bit of a history of that right at the moment. But Come on, Steve. Um, yeah, um, that was a good Magic Round. Well, the yeah. result wasn't that good, but the, but the point the is, was good, travel, so it's good to see some good. fans here, which very is good. great. So you up from Canberra? No, I live here in Sydney. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I was here. Well, we went out for the what last week against the Dogs, and here now. So it's good to. Yeah, I like it. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Um, so we're just going through the game. I don't know if you've seen Greenhouse Live before, but of course, of course yeah, well, who wouldn't? <laughs> um, uh, yes. um, but so we got to half time there, and and eighteen nil was a very very good result, I thought. But and then same sort of thing happened a bit in the start of the second half, where we seemed to control it, we seemed to dominate, but we didn't quite put the put the points on, and then eventually the the points came. Um, but again, you just saw all the time. The effort and the defence. And that try saver from um, Simonson was just unbelievable, I thought. Yeah, it was amazing. But, you know, it's interesting. I actually thought the Tigers already looked a little bit demoralised when they yeah. came out. And I have to wonder if part of that is how we scored the first three tries. Like, they were so... That's three finalists for try of the year right there. And it had to be a little bit demoralising for them that they couldn't even get close. Oh, and, and, clearly, <laughs> and clearly their structure clearly their structure was a bit stuffed by that point as well because... Um, Benji's Benji had gone off. I mean, to him? Uh, apparently, got a scratch in the eye. Um, so um, that's what they said on Channel Nine. But yeah, yeah. Moses in by running around at one four and six. Yeah, in that second I half. Work out where he yeah, yeah, actually. one four six, yeah, and they exactly. want to get rid of him. So yeah, it's an exactly. interesting, interesting thing. But um, yeah, it's. Um, I, so I felt that yeah, they were they were off. Robbie was probably still you know excited about Liverpool. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, as I say, I'm not happy about that. But anyway, they, they won fair, fair um, play to them. Here's Simon with the drums. Here we go. We've got a cast of thousands here. Raiders. I'm surprised you got that drum back. I'm surprised you got that drum back, uh, Simon. It seemed every Raiders player wanted to have a go with that. So. <laughs> Good on you, Simon. As I've said with that drum, that drum's good for a couple of minutes, but or a couple of seconds actually. Then it uh, gets rather loud. Um, so it's probably good to hear from a distance, I reckon. But um, yeah, look. No, no. Well, they're, they're hanging around because uh, your mates are hanging. Yeah, Blake's here, so he's driving us home. He's driving you home. Well, there you go. Well, don't let him go because you know, it's a long walk. But. Um, no, so look, just just really, really good performance, really solid. I thought, you know, we talked about those Origin players coming off um, off there. I thought Papali was fantastic oh, when he came on. Yeah. I thought Whiten was very solid all game. Give he, a bit of credit to Whiten because he he, uh, he came back from that mistake the other night. The microphone. He got, he came back from that mistake the other night, yeah. and then also uh, early in the first half made another mistake, and yeah, yeah. he's definitely not letting that shake his confidence, which is yeah. good to see. Still added to go for that forty twenty late in the yeah. half. So that was close, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. the forty twenty. Yeah. yeah, no, it was. I wanted to see a replay on that forty twenty because I, I, I was sitting. I was sitting right there. It was. Uh, it was. It was definitely not a forty twenty, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think it was just short. But but the thing about Jacko is is and I wasn't particularly worried when he. You know that was disappointing. Obviously, what happened to him on Wednesday night. But I wasn't particularly worried about that. We've seen with Jacko that he he comes back from that. Mm. Pretty well. Like he's made some blues before. Um, you know, it wasn't that dissimilar to that pass he did at um, Cogger a couple of years ago. Um, you know, he's made some mistakes before and he bounces back pretty well. I think he's he's pretty resilient like that. So I'm not surprised that he bounced back. And he would have been desperate to play tonight. I think just to get back on the part. Kotrick, obviously, you know, I think our hearts were all in the mouths on um, Wednesday night when he went down, yeah. down with a knee injury, and you thought, oh no. Um, but you know, for him to to bounce back, play really well again tonight. I thought he struggled a little bit on Wednesday night, to be honest. I thought he, his colours were lowered by Oates. I thought that, um, you know, he'll, he'll learn from that, that, um, you know, that origin is a real step up. And, and as a 20-year-old playing origin, sort of um, only in his third season of NRL, that is a big, big step up. And, he, and I think he got found out a little bit. But, but he'll be even better for that. And, you know, coming back into club football, he was brilliant tonight. He was great. Yeah, absolutely. He's ran for 100-plus on Wednesday, but and he, and he did it. I thought he was, you know... Backed up nicely, and Jackie was good. Still had the balls to go for a few things tonight, and Papa's just you know standard Papa, I guess. Yeah, keep keep the comments coming. We will get to those in a sec. We've got so much to talk about with so many people here, so we will definitely get to comments. Um, 
The other thing I want to talk about was I thought that, you know, obviously when, when Hogson went out, um, I think we talked ourselves into misery, or maybe I <laughs> particularly did when we lost to Cowboys the other week when he was going to be out. But um, I really think the, the hookers have stood up. I think both um, Lever and Starling have been really, really solid. I mean, Starling is a tiny bloke. He's yeah, about he's this so high. He's so little. Yeah. Like he, came round the, he came round the walls afterwards, and he is absolutely tiny, and yet he was getting up under their ribs, oh. slamming them on their back. I love him. Yeah, he's yeah, a tiny. He's, he's he's toughness, a isn't it? Fantastic tackle from yeah. Starling at what, uh, yeah. in the second half. He just hammered it, and I was just like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Trained, yeah. In, trained in a good squad at Newey. As yeah. well, and just come here and he's doing well. Yeah, well, that's right, and they've, they've got plenty of good players coming through. So, um, and they won again tonight against um, South. So, um, yeah, no, he's come through there, got his chance. Um, you know, still not in our top thirty, so he's he's playing sort of with the permit to to be able to do that with a few out. So, um, yeah, he's been very very good. And I think he's he's been solid. Lever has been very solid again. I think Lever is. Um, Playing the hand that he needs to play, which yep. he's not a he's not a sort of darting halfback where he's going to do you know magic balls. He's just um, you know be there every time, pass, be 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 accurate, eyes up all the time. He's he's very very yep. solid in that position. No, definitely. And you know there was there was a couple of times he, he took he took and ran the ball, which yep. we need him to. And you know when there's there's no marker, but um, I think he was he had a very solid game. Yep. So um, yeah, both both the hookers did. Yeah, so that, that's been good. Now, obviously, um, we wouldn't mind Josh Hogson back sooner rather than later um, because, you know, he's, he's clearly our number one hooker. But, but his coverage at the moment, whilst we've got him out, you know, that's, that's been pretty good. Um, so he's, he's come in, you know, we've, we've really sort of started to, to get that um, depth, depth happening. I think you've got to go, dear. Go. Good on you. Well, thanks for coming on. Good on you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Good on you. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, um, it is starting to come together with that. Now, obviously, one of the talking points to be, and we haven't got the comments yet, and you've got all the comments up, which is great, so we'll get you talking, going through all those in a sec, Gareth. But um, the one thing that will be talked about, obviously, is the decision was made before the game to drop Sammy and, and play Aidan Caesar. Um, some people have been calling for that. Um, my view, I think I've said that if you're going to make the decision to play Sam Williams, you had to give him a fair run, and he, and he probably got that, you know, he got six or seven weeks. Obviously, the option last week when Caesar came back into the side because White was out was always going to mean that was probably a decision point. Yeah. Um, and when I think we saw last night when Caesar was still in the squad when they dropped it down to 19, um, and obviously Kotrick was still touch and go, that you just got the feeling, I thought he was either, there was going to, one or two things was going to happen. Either Caesar was going to play and Williams was going to be out, or he was going to be the backup hooker and Starling was going to be out. And so they've gone with Caesar tonight. Thoughts on, on that? I think Caesar had a very good game tonight. I think he had the sort of game that very much showed that he really, really, really wants to be our, our half. Um, he was always sniffing around. He was putting in some good kicks, looking for the, looking for the edges. Um, that intercept pass at the end was just—he was right there. Yeah. Like he saw that coming a mile off. And I mean, you know, I love Sam Williams. What Raiders fan doesn't love oh. Sam Williams? But I just think Caesar has probably got it on him at this point. And also in defence, like they run into Caesar, they stop. They run into Williams, they make another 10, 20 metres. Okay. Yeah, I've got no problems with uh, Caesar's game. I, th I think it's quite good. He just uh, Some of his kicking sometimes, I think, lets him down. Some of the little jabs that he puts in behind the line. There was a few kicks on the fifth tackle, which just went straight to the winger or the fullback uh, and doesn't really allow them to build any pressure. But aside from that, I think you know he's, he's, he's clawed his way back into the side now, so it's up to him whether or not he wants to keep his position. Uh, and, you know, there's always next season. So, you know, if they really want to stake a claim, either one of them's got to do it now. Yeah. So... Thoughts? Yeah, I thought, um, you know, Caesar early, I think his first kick of the game, it went uh, went deep, yeah. uh, went too far. So I was a little bit worried because the same thing happened last week. Um, but I think he, he definitely turned it turned it around and, um, no, had a, had a, I think had a great game to stamp his position back in the team. Yeah, look, I, I thought he was okay. I, I, I didn't think he was great. I, I, I agree with what you said, Gareth, about his kicking game early on. I think that he, particularly in that first half when we were 6-0 up, the next sort of probably 20 minutes, I really thought that that in greasy conditions was an opportunity for a half with a good kicking game. We got plenty of good field position mm. to really put his stamp on the on the game. And 
I thought he was good, but he still could be better. You know, there, there was a few opportunities there to really get repeat sets and, and put something in. So that will continue to be a discussion point. I, I, but my view, again, is that, you know, similar to what I said when Williams came in, if you're going to make that decision, you're then going to stick with it for a while. Mm. You, can't, you can't have this situation where every second week and every time we lose, and we see this on the, on the greenhouse, is that every time we lose, you know, we want to sack the halfback. We can't do that, you know. Like, if you're going to make a decision, you've got to then go with that. And if the decision now is to have Caesar as, as number one ahead of Williams, then that's the way we'll go. Now, look, who knows? You know, these things, these can, can turn around quickly. Obviously, um, Caesar got his chance with um, Whiten being an origin. Probably if Whiten hadn't have been an origin last week, he probably wouldn't have got his chance. So um, they might have stuck with Williams and then, you know, if that was the case, Williams probably would have played tonight. So it can turn quickly, but it will be a, a discussion point um, the whole way. And I think if we're going to be really challenging, we do need one of them to really stamp their mark on the team and to... And to you know, guide us around the park. I think because the other problem that it causes is if they don't put their mark on the game, it causes Hodjo to, to try and do too much as well. Mm. And then he ends up going backwards as well. I, th- I think like in the Manly game, for instance, that's what I found. Yeah. He was just trying to do too much. Yeah. So if either one of them, you know, doesn't put their mark on the game and, and really take it, you know, the bull by the horn, so to speak, then, you know, that's when we start going backwards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I think, I think, and you're right. Defensively, they. I'm, I'm not too sure that their back rowers are quite as scary as um, some of the other teams. You know, Cheekam, Cheekam obviously played with us in twenties and and stuff like that. Came through was an okay player, both at centre and, and back row in twenties. But I haven't quite felt as ever quite made it in first grade. He's been in a couple of clubs now. He obviously had that one where he won the game for them against Brisbane. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Must be a few weeks ago now, but um, apart from that, I'm not a massive rap for him. And Chris Lawrence is coming back from a really bad injury, so they um, and m- m- mind you, Madison on the other side was very, very good as back row. Um, but yeah, I think that that probably is not necessarily we weren't pressured that, as much in defence with the halves having to make as many tackles tonight. But it will be a discussion, I'm sure, that we'll have a number of times on on this show. Probably, <laughs> probably every time we lose, it seems to light up with you know sack the halfback. So. Um, that is that is good. We're coming through, Gareth. I think we need to get to some comments. I'm sure there's hundreds of them there. Just before we do, can yep. I just throw in a good word for Jared Croker because oh. I thought he was really good tonight. Um, defensively, his reads were so much better. Yeah. Um, in attack, he was good. He came up with that incredible. How, I don't even know how he did that flick pass back inside, yeah. and then. You could see he ran that try he scored was pretty much right in front of where I was sitting and you could see him searching for the gap in the line and he saw it and went straight through. Oh, look, he's continuing to have a very solid year. Obviously, um, he got a little bit of criticism for one of the tries he led in last week, but he's been very, very solid all year. Um, his flick passes, there's been a number of those this year, which has been great. Got a try tonight, which of course puts him only one behind yeah, Jason Croker. Funny. So um, that that's potentially something next week at home, which would you know it'd be magnificent if you could get one, and even better if you could get two and actually break the record at, at home. Um, we not, don't play at home again for a few weeks after that. So um, obviously, if that could you know do that in Canberra, would be would be just um, icing on the cake if you could do that. And of course, if he scores two tries, we're probably well on the way <laughs> to to having a win again. So um, yeah, very very pleasing, Jared, that he played um, very very well and and. It'll be well, well deserved when he gets the record. It's only a matter of time. I mean, if it's not next week, it'll be um, in the next few weeks. But um, yeah, it's going to be going to be a nice time when he he gets that record. Uh, so some similar stuff. Uh, Gavin Bryan, just brilliant. How we, now we need to build some momentum uh, and get, not get our head in the clouds. Uh, well, I think one of the things about this team and the way we're playing this year and the attitude we've had is yeah. okay. You, yep, just no jump worries. in. Yep. Um, <laughs> I think that's one of the things about this team that I doubt that's going to happen. I think we're we're pretty focused, and and again, you know, there was a lot of talk about Ricky last year, and and deservedly so. You know, we hadn't made the finals for a number of years, um, but as I've said the whole way through, they promised something over the preseason, which was an improved defensive effort. I still think the Cappy coming back has made a big difference in the coaching staff. Um, that's Andrew McFadden, if people don't know. Um, has been, you know, but they've just delivered on that the whole way through. And for three shutouts in, in 13 games, just says that our, our defence has just been really, really good. Yeah, definitely. And I think this year that one of the big differences is just those little X factors. Yeah. You know, um, people talk about John Bateman talking in the line about defence, you know, putting defence in. And those are things we didn't have last year. And, yeah, so those, I think, little X factors were uh, the big difference, well... Not the big difference, but the, that little difference that make um, when we've had those tight games, we've gotten over them. And, um, yeah, I think that's 
Yeah, well, it'd be interesting to know what our record is when John... So, what, John Bateman missed, what, two games and we lost... No, lost, he missed three, did he? No, he's three. So he we lost all three. Yep. So, so what's our record with him? Eight and two, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, so he lost against uh, Roosters. Yep. Or did he? No, Storm. no, he, he didn't play against Roosters. He, he lost against Storm, Storm, Storm and, and Manly. And Manly, yeah. So they're the two that. Yeah, well, he's really good against Manly too. So and he was pretty good against Storm. So yeah, they're the two we've we've lost with him out. So he's he's been a massive um, player in our team. Keep going there, Mick right, Sebo. So Mick Sebo is. How good was the Raiders crowd chant uh, the Tigers fans leaving early toward the end? Yeah, it's always good. There wasn't that many Tigers fans here to leave. But um, <laughs> yep. Steve Spencer, uh, Fox Sports commentary saying that we're genuine uh, finals contenders. Uh, it was the same as what you oh, said. Okay. Well, no, look, I don't think there's any question we're finals yeah. contenders. I mean, I, I, I always think that it's a race to 13 is, is my view. Is it um, how they talk about race to 16 in, in NBA or something like that. But it's a race to 13, I think, during the season. You need 13 wins to get, you know... You, you have to be very unlucky, I think, not to get in with 13 wins. So um, we're at, what, eight now? So we've got five to go. Um, but I think with this team, we can actually hope for a bit more than just scraping into the eight. I think we can we can be right up there. And yeah. I still think that there's probably... A, a, I know they've lost, lost a couple of games lately, but I still think there's probably three clear um, contenders with Storm, um, Souths and, uh, and Roosters. Yeah. But... But um, And Newcastle, obviously, going very, very well at the moment. But we're not far behind that pack. No, definitely. You know, they talk about the best of the rest. And yeah. um, I hope, you know, we, we, we stay on that, you know, hang on to that fourth spot. Hey, look, if we do even better than that, that would yeah. be fantastic. But I think, um, you know, there's there's a level of, um, of game that the, those other three teams have been playing this year that, you know, is, is that step above. And, but I, I'm I'm more than more than happy where we're sitting at the moment. Yeah, and when we've played those teams, even though we've played pretty well, we've just been a, a little bit behind. So we've got a, we've got a fair way to go, I think, still. But but we are right in the mix, which is very very good. Uh, Lauren uh, Simonson was massive. Oh, yeah, terrific. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, so how brilliant are these young kids? They're only getting better. Yep. Yeah, look, that's right. I mean, we, we're really developing those guys through. Obviously, had a couple out tonight. Hawes was injured. Hudson Young got suspended and out for a while, which was, which was disappointing. I think my view on that is that should have fought it. Well, look, I know. Look, I don't know to be honest, Colin. I, I, I think, I think it was there. I, you know, my view of that is that look, you could argue that Maguire's, you know, fine was ridiculous compared to the five week suspension, but that wouldn't have won us the case. He, his hands were there, clearly there, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, eye gouging's not on. He's going to have to come back Pretty from that. You keep your hands away from the face. Yeah, That's he's gonna, he's he's going to have to come back from that, just like he has with the the drugs thing when he was still 16. Um, it's it's not a great thing to have on your record, but um, he'll need to come back from that and, and work hard. Um, he'll have to work hard to get his spot back um, when that happens. But he's a good kid, and he'll and he'll and he'll come back probably through Mounties and and do that do that work to to force his way back but it was a disappointing act I have to say I, you know, we, we don't particularly want to see that in the game no. Peter Smith obviously he's a Caesar fan thank yep. God he's back yep. Yep. Uh, Mick again the scary thing is that we still have areas that we can get better in yeah no worries which you'd agree with uh, Kate Keating, uh, good job, Ferrari. There may be an opening on the Today Show. Oh, there you go. So there you go. The last, well, the last bloke got sacked from the Today Show, didn't he? But he's on about fifty grand a week, so you know, no, I, I could probably have some of that. <laughs> Is that no. similar to what they pay at jerseys? Working? I wish. 50 yeah. grand a week. Yeah, yeah that'd be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's about what Steve used to get paid, I think, at Treasury. Oh, well, why'd he leave? Oh, he retired. Oh, he retired to count his millions, I think. Uh, so what do we got here? Michael, uh, good luck picking our best and fairest this year. We have so many players playing great footy at the moment. Oh, I agree, but but like we said, there's one bloke with a record of 8-2 and two with, so to me, he's, he's the man at the moment, John Bateman, and he would be... Head and I, reckon, shoulders, I reckon Chance is going to get the Mel, the Mel Manga. Well, we haven't actually mentioned him all night, but but how good was he again? Yeah, you know, like, exactly. No, he had a, he had a blinder of a game. Actually, yeah, no, he had a, a great game. And we didn't actually we talked about Bateman's kick for that try just before half time. His work, he was just oh. lurking there because I thought at one stage, because as I said, I, I thought we were going to go for a field goal, and I actually thought he was going to come in for the field goal because he almost looked yeah. like it, which he's not normally a field goal kicker. I was surprised when he did that, but his work just lurking around the hip there and. And when Bateman put that that through, it was just just fantastic. No, that was brilliant. It went, I think it went Bateman, Chance, then back to Bateman, and it was just a, a great combination between the, between the two of them. Yeah, and look, I have to say, we can all be very grateful. I heard that um, from a couple of the Raiders coaching or fitness staff that apparently when he went down with his knee a couple of weeks ago, it was like that far away from being ACL, 
and that would have been it for the year. So fortunately, the you know tear was just in a slightly different spot to where it could be because uh, otherwise he could be on the sideline for Actually, 12 thought, months. Uh, Rapper as well tonight looked a little shaky with his leg. Uh, we noticed he was limping a little bit initially, so I'm not sure if he came back too early, but yeah, well, he looked all right. Comes back. He, he should still be coming back from his first injury. He's coming back from about his fourth injury this year. But, um, yeah, look, he, he probably wasn't as good tonight. Um, yeah. But, um, geez, ha- glad to have him back, and, and he'll come through that. Again, you know, we talked about this period just trying to get through. We're going to have a very short turnaround again. We, we play Thursday night next week, which means that for our Origin guys, are going to play Wednesday, thir- Wednesday Friday, Thursday. Um, we, uh, the rest of them are going to play Saturday, Friday, s- Thursday. So it's a tough turnaround again. We will be looking forward to that break after next week, I have to say. There's, there's only one game in a month after that, and that will hopefully get an opportunity for guys to get a bit We're of fitness up. up at the moment. So, yeah, we yeah. are. So, so whilst we've got through these two, which is fantastic, I think they'll be very glad of the week off after next week. If we could go, into, if we could go in, and we'll talk about next week later, but if we could go in somehow with three wins, if we could get another one next week, geez, we'd, we'd be in a great position and going into those, those weeks off. Uh, Nathan saying that uh, Caesar's a one-game player and then he wants out of his contract. So how loyal is he? I don't know how much about that. Oh no! Look, uh, well, I, I'm. Look, my... Post his alphabet, the, the alphabet guy on the forum. Oh, right look, I don't, I don't know. But my look, my view on that is that look, he's a professional footballer. He will, he will want to play first grade mm. and he'll want to go to a place where he's going to be options. able to do that. Now, there's obviously been some talk he's contracted here for next year but there's been some talk about what will happen there's still talk about you know George Williams we haven't seemed to have signed the dotted line there for that or it certainly hasn't been announced but but you know the 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 strong male is he's going to come that will mean that there'll have to be some decisions made um that will come my view of it is that he's here for this year and we're right in the bloody comp for 2019 where you know 2020 will come when 2020 comes uh, definitely, and I think you know, with this uh, period at the moment where we're going through a few injuries and through suspensions, yeah. I think what, what we've got definitely um, is some depth that we haven't had in the past. Yeah. Um, and so you know, we've got people like Simonson on that wing, but we've still got Oldfield waiting there to you know if there's if anything happens as well. So I think well, that shows how how much Bailey has come up over that time. I think I think probably when you looked at it, obviously Oldfield was injured right at the start of the season, but Oldfield was sort of the number one backup. I don't there was any doubt about that. And so for him to then take that spot, obviously he's fitting in the right position with Kotrick now going to centre and, and there's an opportunity to blood Kotrick in the centre for a long time because yeah. um, Leilu is going to be out for yeah. probably all season and yeah. maybe it still wouldn't surprise me if he comes back. But um, he's going to be out for quite some time. So it gives an opportunity for Kotrick to play that position. But Bailey, I think, just keeps getting better every week. Oh, he proved it tonight as well yeah. with that, you know, with that tackle and then that try save as well. He had a he had a blinder of a game. And I think there's a lot of options with him too. I mean, and this is what you see with a sevens play because you know, obviously in sevens you have to pretty much play the whole field because um, that's you know, there's, obviously there's only seven people on the field. Um, he seems to be very versatile with it. I, I think that that game that he played in. Um, Brisbane, when we in the Magic Round, when he came off off the bench and was playing back row until Rapana got hurt, he showed a bit there. I thought as a as a utility as well. So he's I a think big there's unit, some, oh, he's he's massive, small. isn't he? He's yeah, he's massive. At all. And he massive. just when it, every time Simmonson runs, he has this spark. He yeah. looks like he's going to make something happen. Yeah. And I love those players because they're so exciting to watch. Yeah. No, I think I think there's a lot of options for him. I think there's there's um, there's a real future there. Uh, Steve Spencer, when uh, the injury run kicked in last year, Ricky had a difficult task of choosing a strong team. This year, he's having a, a difficult choice of who to leave out. Yeah, look, there's, there's plenty of options. You know, particularly our forward depth is is good. Um, you know, I'm always, I would like to see our strongest back five. Um, you know, I think they are a bit stronger than the others, even though, um, well, we talked about Simmonson, but but also Oldfield's a solid player. But I I do prefer to see the others. And Seb Chris, I think is is developing, but um, he'll come through. Um, yeah, I think you know the, the the real decision still that needs to be made, and we've talked about this. Will be the the halves and and just and well, just. Garner hasn't even got to mention him. I mean, is he's he almost hurt? forgotten about. No, him. no, he's playing for Mounties. He's oh, I don't think he's missed. He's out this week. Oh, he's out this week. Is he okay? So I heard that he I heard that he didn't play the second half last week, and that he's in, he might be injured. Oh, sorry. Yes, but, but you're right. He actually, he hasn't even got to mention this year. Like, no, you, no, you're right. He was 18th or 19th man last week when we had. No one left, but but you're right. He um, he did come off at half time last week. I saw that. Um, yeah, so he won't be playing tomorrow. Um, Steve and I are actually going to go out to Mounties tomorrow. They're playing Tigers. Well, they're playing Tigers or Magpies or whatever they want to call themselves this day. Um, 
tomorrow at Campbelltown, so then the flag play as well. So yeah, true. Um, so we're actually here. Um, who's the new guy, Blake? Uh, Nathan Jones. Oh, Blake. No, Blake was our mate. Yeah. So, was on so do you think the Rick will buy more poms? Uh, has there been good buys so far? Well, we've talked about George Williams potentially. So, um, well, hey, if they're as good as the ones we've got, we'd, we'd take them all, wouldn't we? Yeah. No, I'd be more than happy. You know, these these guys. When we first had Elliot and um, and Hojo, look, they were they were great, and they just encourage. Look, the fact that they're encouraging their talent to come over there, and the fact that you know, Sydney players don't want to come down to Canberra yeah. um, means we've got to look for players elsewhere and if that means it's uh, Northern England so be it yeah look I think that's I think that's right I actually saw an interview with um, John Bateman when he was in um, back home in England he was on it was a really good interview actually it was on I think it was on Facebook but it was through Sky Sports and um, he was actually saying it was getting a bit hot there when he wanted to come back to Canberra which <laughs> is an interesting interesting comment I don't think anyone's ever said Bradford was too hot but um, but uh, you know he, they've come through and I think what they've done too is and this is we've talked about this a few times but one of the things they've brought is they've brought an attitude that we didn't see so we knew John Bateman was a good player like he's you know he was second or third in Man of Steel um, last year obviously behind Ben Ben Barber he came back to Australia too it didn't quite work out for him Blake Austin might win Man of Steel this year but um, you know but we we just knew that um, he was a good player he played for England been a good player for them but I don't think we knew just how, what the attitude he'd bring and and the spirit that he'd bring. I think has just been just been phenomenal, and and I think that's that's come through with Sutton. We talked about him early on about him being sort of a de- bit of a development player. He's not a development no. player anymore. <laughs> he's he's a top class <laughs> forward, um, and um, obviously Hogso um, is a really good player, and, and Whitehead continues to be a very very solid player as well. So. Um, We've we had really one that didn't work out. That was Jordan. Well, Jordan we had Turner. John Turner. That yeah, it, so. that was a bit of a strange one for me because he he'd been sort of around for a long time, been a, didn't really have a position, and and mm. um, probably didn't quite fit in. So and but, but to me also probably gave it away a little bit early too. I mean, we talk first, about first quarter of the season. I think. It was. Yeah, we talk about you know sometimes it doesn't take much. You know, mm. an injury here or you get a new opportunity and maybe that happens, um, but. I would also say too, when Hogson was out early in the season and he yeah. didn't play hooker, and then um, someone was out in the centres, he didn't get going in the centre. The probably writing was on the wall. But um, yeah, I think he probably should have stuck it out for a bit longer. Yeah. He got an opportunity to go back to England, got a reason a three-year contract. I think back in England, got here straight away. And I don't know if he's played much since. So um, yeah, but but anyway, that that didn't quite work out. But we'll take what's that four out of five? We'll take uh, that. Just back at this one, Tasso. Did we know he got man of the match? Uh, well, we'll talk about our 3-2-1 in a sec, our man of the match, but who, got, who Channel 9 gave who, it to, I'm not possibly sure. Possibly it was Croker, I'm not sure. I saw them interview. No, nah, they interviewed but... Croker, but I, I don't know whether no, he was man of the match. The captain. Hang on, I'm looking for yeah, it. I don't know. Anyway, someone might have that. Um, Russell, congrats to the boys. First time uh, in the club's history they've kept uh, three teams to zero in a single season. Yeah, we've talked about talked that, which about is that just amazing and very, very pleasing. Uh, oh. Frank, uh, Jordan Rapner looks like he's never missed a beat. So. Well, we talked about that. We Perhaps it wasn't his best game t- tonight, but... Just to have him back on the field is very good. Uh, Sutton. Oh. Sutton got me out of the match. There we go. Oh, I would That's totally fair. agree. I would yeah, totally agree with that. I fair. thought he was he was fantastic. Um, yep, no, wouldn't yeah, it? That's about it. Okay, so it's probably a Can good I time. Say, I just opened an RL.com and the second thing I saw after our match highlights was apparently four players got sin binned in the uh, early yeah. match. No, they did. I actually I actually saw that. I was having I some dinner. That, yeah. I was having some dinner just before um, before uh, it was just on half time actually I was just having some yeah. dinner at a, at a pub just before um, coming over here and um, yeah they did there was um, Tom Burgess and Safidi had a bit of a dust up head butts and then everyone came in and it was on so um, Mitch Barnett didn't get sent off actually which was probably surprising he's um, normally right up there when there's the fight's happening but um, yeah that was that was their game not particularly worried about that but um, good luck to um Newcastle, they're going pretty well actually. Um, so ours three, two, one. Thoughts? Oh, three. I'd have to give to, to Chance. I thought he was really, really strong at the back. Um, two. Uh, I'm torn between Jack and and probably Bateman. Uh, and one. I'm going to give one to Caesar. Okay. Yeah. Colin. Tough one this week. I think every like. They played together as a unit, so nobody really stood out, which was fantastic. Um, three to Chance as well. Um, two to Bateman, and I'll give one to, to Bailey Simonson for that, uh, you know, the, that tackle and, um, and the holding up. Yep. 
I think I'm going to give three to Bateman because I thought he was still rushing up with good energy. Um, he still made those breaks. He set up that try. I thought he played really well. Um, this is a really hard one this week, isn't it? Um, two probably to Chance because I thought Chance was, was really, really good. And I'm going to give my one to Croker because I just thought he was really sort of a toss-up between Croker and Caesar for me, but I just thought Croker was really there. He was making things happen, looking for those gaps like he always used to, and, yeah, he played really well. Yeah, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to agree with Channel 9. I thought that Ryan Sutton was fantastic early on. I just thought that, that first 55 minutes was just amazing. He really set the platform for our intensity. Um, I would be having him start every week. I know that's going to be hard to fit them all in at the moment because you know Tarpney's coming back. Although I think he's got he's got a little bit of match fitness to get. He he it's seemed to be quiet seemed to be pretty gassed yeah, pretty yeah, early tonight. Yeah. But but um, he's coming back. It's pretty hard to keep him out. Obviously Bateman plays you know starts when he's there. Papali Louis been very good. Um, and Whitehead, you, you have, want to have on the field 80 minutes every game. So, you know, it's hard to find a spot for him in the starting lineup. But I just think when we've had Sutton on the start, he allows, and it didn't happen tonight because Papali didn't start, but, but he just allows Papali to play a little bit wider. And as soon as we've seen Papali play a bit wider, I just think he's been so much more damaging. Um, but to me, he just set the platform tonight. He had a job to do because, you know, he didn't have the two um, bookends starting that have normally been starting. Um, really set the platform. Um, Bateman was my two. I just thought he just, again, the start that he gave us and the intensity he gave us um, was terrific. And look, probably probably Nickel Clock's there for one, but I think there's a few you could give one to. I, I actually think Darnamus Louis wasn't far away from the one. I, oh, yeah, I, I, I know I'm, I'm probably by myself most of the week yeah. saying that I think he's a really good player. No, I'm with you. But, I'm with you. But, I'm with you. Uh, well, there's a lot of people well, in the well, greenhouse that don't agree. Ball control this year, that's where, you know, and I think in the last few weeks his um, post-contact metres has been a lot, but, you know, yeah. in, in, in weeks gone by he hit up the line and gets stopped, but in the, you know, I think in, in the last two games at least, um, his, his post-contact meters have been fantastic. As, as I say, I don't think you could go far off giving Papali a point either because, um, you know, his, his effort to come back two days after after Origin was just um, superhuman. So, look, Louis, Louis' first hit was so good that we couldn't see the number from yeah. our angle and me and the people around us actually thought it was Papali in the first hit. That was how good Louis' first hit was. Okay, and was... then we realised that, no, Papali's about to get the ball, so it must have been Louis. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, they come. Yes, right, they're coming together. I thought you were talking about the first hit of the match. Um, oh, no, I was going to no. say they they um, be watching that. I'm not too sure if they're watching what they're watching there with Papali on the bench. But okay, um, Cronulla obviously next week. Um, there's been plenty of heartbreak against Cronulla over the last few years. Um, it's been and a grudge match for us. It's been a grudge match, but to be honest, they've been on the better side of it. Although I know mm. we've won at um, Cronulla a few times, but but we haven't beaten them in Canberra for God knows how long. No. I mean, they've you know beaten us a number of times, including that heartbreak final um, a few surely, years surely ago. McGinnis has some stuff for us now. He's, he's just <laughs> yeah, well, tidbits or something. yeah, exactly. Um, well, look, actually, you talk about coaching stuff. He's but I think pretty important too. I actually would like to see um, him blow the Viking horn next week. <laughs> blow the Viking horn, yeah. You reckon that would be... Um, there ways of making up for the Viking clap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, look, look, well, I mean, but again, what, what to me, what Innes has brought, and I know this is probably going to be the longest greenhouse live in the history, but um, what he's brought is he brought that intensity, and I never had a problem with what he did no, that, that night there, because fun. he showed how much, how intense he was. I, mm. I actually had a lot of time for him as a player, because you know, he's a sort of guy that I always thought, you'd want on our team. He wasn't far away from coming to us at that time. Now, I've always said, you know, if he had to come, Hogson wouldn't have come. And, you know, we'll be happy with what we've got. And Hogson's going to be there for a lot longer than, than Ennis. But I'd also go back and say, maybe with Hogson getting hurt in that final and not being 100% fit those couple of games in 2016, maybe if we had had Mick Ennis in 2016, history might be different too. So, um Anyway, that wasn't to be, but he's now part of our coaching staff, and I think, again, he's brought that enthusiasm to it. But, but Cronulla is obviously, um, we really need to win at home. It is, a, it is a great opportunity to get a win before, um, well, it's going to be two weekends off, because we obviously we play Thursday, so we'll have that weekend off, and then the following weekend. Um, it really is a big, big opportunity to do that, and that cons- consolidates our spot in the top four or five if we... If we do that, but it will be tough. They're they're starting to get their their game together well, a bit. They're up and down season, so and, and they, they they've got a few back as well. So um, we're still going to be a bit banged up with you know obviously Hogson won't be out, won't be back. Young will be still be suspended. You know those sort of those sort of things will will um, 
still be there. Obviously, um, they lose is going to be out for a long time. Um, but it will be it will be tough. But a Thursday night, you, you wouldn't think expect it's going to be particularly warm um, on a Thursday night in in Canberra. But um, it's certainly been very frosty the last couple of nights. But yeah, just just a massive opportunity for us to consolidate and and really push forward. Um, we're obviously past halfway, but really, what is a, a halfway point of the season? Really push forward for that second half. And I think the momentum from tonight, you know, that another shutout will will be uh, will be great to to push them forward as well. Yep, and uh, I've just got the weather forecast up. Minimum on Thursday will be seven degrees, but oh. it's gonna rain. Seven, seven degrees. Jeez. Well, well, the rain might actually mean it's not quite as cold. But yeah, that's that's um, not particularly inviting, is it? But, <laughs> but, um, and but it certainly won't worry Canola. I mean, they'll come and play with the snow. They'll still be pretty good because they've they've just played in any condition in Canberra. But um, yeah, big game next week. Hopefully, get plenty of people out there. Hopefully, maybe Jerry Croker to break the break um, Jason Croker's record. You know, a record that maybe people never thought would be broken. You know, in in these days of players moving clubs, so and he'll break it with um, many many years of his career to go. So um, that'll be terrific. Until then, I think we've probably, oh God knows how long we've gone for tonight. Oh, so okay, Jersey Fleck. Okay, so we did touch on that briefly. Jersey Fleck and Mounties play tomorrow. So Fleck play. I think it is the West Tigers um, at Campbelltown, and then Mounties play whatever the West Tigers are. I think they are called Western Suburbs Magpies, but you know they call themselves something different every week. And uh, seriously, like they've been twenty years since they they merged, or they, they didn't merge. They the twenty years since these clubs come together, and they still have different committees. And oh, I, I don't get me started on them. I reckon they're. Really ordinary organisation, I have to say, but but um, and they have about 15 home grounds. And, anyway, um, that's the, the, they they won't be playing this one too. They won't want to play here too often. I think they're about 90 to six well, actually, or something. At the moment. I said to Steve tonight, I actually think that this ground might be a bit of a, a a problem for Parramatta and West Tigers and stuff like that because actually everyone wants to come here and play. Yeah. So it actually might work against them rather than being in their favour at least for the first season or so. Oh look, it's it's it, this is this is a really really good venue. I mean, you know, we talk about we talk about potentially having a new stadium in Canberra, and I think that that's probably a fair way off because you know someone's going to come up with the money, and I'm not too sure that that's lying around right at the moment. Um, rates in Canberra can't go any higher, surely. But um, the um, you know, I think, but we'd love to have something like this. We probably wouldn't need quite as big as this, but something like this in yeah. Canberra one day would be fantastic. The only thing I don't like here is that you can't get over on the western side there. Um, but aside from that, it, it is a brilliant setup. Um, I set up um, up the top there tonight, and you just right over the top of the ground, a bit like the one in Melbourne. I really like that. Um, yeah, really, really good Not ground. A so, in the house. Yeah, it's you'd, phenomenal. Really, you'd is. love to see. Some of the seats in that, some of the seats in that opposition bay were just because it was very end on. Uh, okay. It could get a bit weird if things started going over into that corner. But you know, I had Croker score that try right in front of me, so I can't be too complaining. <laughs> and I'm actually, I'm actually coming back for the second time tomorrow. The Brumbies actually play here oh, yeah. tomorrow night. I don't know. Um, obviously, it happens quite regularly in Canberra that they play back to back in um, one after the other. I'm not too sure if they've ever played away games back to back at the same venue in two I think days. Be at first, I yeah. Think so. Be at first. Um, yeah. Hopefully they can they can keep going. They're on a pretty good run at the moment, but um, I couldn't imagine anyone will be there because there's never anyone in Canberra. But um, uh, I think they said that the last Waratahs game here got like six thousand. Yeah. So yeah. no, I don't think there'll be many people here. Yeah, but anyway, that's that's probably Steve will probably yeah, turn. Steve is Steve. Steve, well, he's, he's cranky all the time lately, but he's probably <laughs> even more cranky now. We mentioned Brumbies on the Greenhouse Live, but we've been on for that long. I'm doubt anyone's watching anyway, Steve. Um, okay. Ratings have plummeted ever since I've mentioned Brumbies. All right, Colin, been fantastic having you on. Thank you very Welcome. much. Welcome. Thank you, very Thank much you to, um, for coming on. We'd love to see you on again when we're back up in Sydney. We'd love to see you in Canberra. Um, one day, bring a coat. Uh, yeah. If it's going to be seven <laughs> degrees, let me tell you. Gareth, it's been good to have you on. It's taken a long time yeah, it's to get you on. it's a while to get me on, but thanks for having me on. And we've got to say good day to Kate. She's watching. So yeah, she Kate's watching. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. And Karen, thank you for being on again. You're welcome. And uh, hopefully every time I come on is neck from now on is we won by 28 points. <laughs> yeah, you did. I don't think you had a great record before tonight. No, so, I had a um, record before Okay. Today. All right. Well, until next Thursday, if it's not Thursday already because we've talked for that long, um, <laughs> go Raiders. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Go Raiders.